how to use any 3D scan in Nobot Sculpt. So, for today's exercise, I'm gonna try and do a scan of my lovely girlfriend. She volunteered to be my model for today. And I'm using Scaniverse app. And first I'm gonna do the scan and then I'm gonna explain a few things about what I just did. So we're just gonna do it quickly. Ready, steady, go. The trick to any good scan is to try and cover every area of the head if our example is a head scan every part of the head should be slowly and without any sudden moves past at least once try not to double scan an area and in my experience it helps if you go like a zigzag motion from lower left side of the face up right down right up right down and so on okay now that the scan is done we're gonna process it as a detail best for objects with texture the recommended one and after the processing we'll see how it's made if it's a good scan or not at the first look the scan seems like it's it isn't a good one but often i found that after processing the scan looks way better This turned out to be quite a good scan as a base for us to pick it up in Nomad. After the scan is finished processing, now it's time to edit the scan in the inbuilt editor which allows us to first of all rotate the scan and crop our subject so that way we get rid of the cluster we can see it from the left front and right and we're gonna bring the crop tool in such way that we're just gonna crop the head of it i'm gonna pick cylinder out of these two buttons so that way when I'm looking at the top view I have the possibility of making it something like this double check to see it from the front left and right we're gonna validate this so this way we just have the head of it okay so now as you can see there are a lot of glitches in the scan also the eyes you will have difficulties with scanning the eyes because everything that's reflective or has refraction the lidar sensor will not be able to scan properly but usually for for the eyes i'm just gonna replace the eyes with a 3d model of my eyeball one of my previous models and from here, I want to show you how to clean your scan in such a way that you won't have all these glitches that you can see and make it like a proper sculpt. I'm going to save this. 
Maybe I'm gonna add it a little bit to give it a little bit of sharpness, but not too much, just a little bit. And yeah, save. Now we can either share as a video. If you wanna showcase your scan to someone, you can ch change the motion of it. And here in the motion section, I'm gonna show you the walkthrough of how the scan was made. So basically I started with the lower part of the face. That way I tried to get the neck scanned and the chin, the under. As you can see in the walkthrough video, I started from the lower part left side of the face and tried to go like in up and down motion with just moving to the right just a little bit. Keep in mind that for a good scan you need to go as easy and as smooth as possible with the movements so that way it can capture and build the mesh all together. Don't get frustrated if you don't get it from first. It took a while for me to get here and even so I can't say that it's one of my best scans so far. After you finish passing all the head of the subject round and round, you can share it, actually export the model. And for Nomad, Nomad Sculpt, I find it the best file type to be GLB and you can import it directly into Nomad. Once we got it here, you can notice all the glitches and bumps from the scan way more intense than in Scaniverse. Here we can actually smooth everything out and make it way, way more clean and repair where the glitches didn't do and repair the model for all its glitches. First of all, I'm gonna use smooth tool and I'm gonna put the intensity not too high and I'm just gonna select the model and with the smooth tool you can already see improvements on how those features of the face should look like. At first I'm gonna smooth everything out with the physical based render using textures because Scaniverse will export the mesh with the skin as a texture and not as painting and after smoothing everything out and trying not to overdo anything too much just like even things out i'm passing on every part of the face even though some parts will not be fixed with the smooth tool i just want to make sure i'm passing through each and every corner making sure that i'm having a clean and smooth texture. After doing this for a while, it's good to switch to the matcap view. Oh, we have a weird looking matcap over here. But using like a clean matcap, for example this one, will show you the glitches that you can't actually see while using the physical base render and seeing the skin texture. This is good to double check everything before moving on to the next stage. Like I said, I try not to overdo it and just making sure that the face, at least the face, is as smooth as possible without changing the features too much. The risk of doing too much smooth is to change the features of the model in a way that maybe you don't want or you don't need. I'm gonna do the neck as well. The reason why it's switching between gizmo and small tool is because I'm using my keyboard and with the shift key I'm able to just switch when I need to the small tool. Okay, so the face looks quite clean. I'm gonna switch back to matcap view, uh, sorry, PBR render. So this way we have quite the clean scan, I would say. The hair is all messy, but the hair isn't that important because for me personal, I'm gonna use more the head of my girlfriend and try to build a character out of her. So I'm gonna even maybe do the hair 
myself like from scratch. If it's in the way, yeah, I'm gonna just make sure to use drag or move and pull, but pull carefully so I won't mess up her structure. While using the smooth tool to even the glitches out, you will have to adjust a few things here and there of your scan to make sure you don't lose information just by smoothing out too much. For example, the nose, it's way too flat. So I'm just gonna try and correct this by using the drag tool and just here and there pulling and dragging so that way it will have more of a nose, an actual nose look. Keep in mind, this is an experimental workflow. It's up to you how much you want to invest in finishing up your scan. But basically you can use it as a base, base model. Work your way through. It's a good start to have and why not? It's even more fun to work a model that you already know. I'm using crease tool for the lips, so that way I have a little bit of gap between the lips. Also, I'm gonna use the clay tool without painting to do the nostrils. Switching to matte cap is a good way to double check your volumes. Giving the fact that I'm not looking to get like a hyper realistic model of my girlfriend. And I'm using her as a base for a more artistic sculpt. I'm not gonna invest too much in keeping everything perfect and accurate. I can just play with the model as I feel like. And over here with the crease tool, I'm just making sure to highlight a few of her features even if I exaggerate them a little bit. I'm gonna subdivide one time. And by putting a mask on the eyes, I'm gonna invert the mask and use the gizmo to just punch holes where the eyeball should be. Invert and with gizmo, I'm just gonna pull them inside of the mesh. Now I can clear the mask and add to the scene the eyeball that I was talking about. Apparently I brought more than just the eyeball to the scene because I had lights and views already saved in the previous document where I made the eyeball. But I'm gonna get rid of the ones that don't help me that much with my model. I only need outer part and inner bit. These ones I can delete. In the next part of the video, I'm gonna put a time lapse of a few tweaks and adjustments, so to say. And as you can see, I'm just using drag tool, smooth tool, maybe even flat tool just make sure that I have the model where I want it. It's not rocket science, it's just trying your best to make the model so you like it more and more. Adjusting the eyes, the eyelids, which to be fair, I didn't even try to detail as much. I just wanted to make it look not weird. You could invest a lot more time if you want to and finish it up way more that, than I'm showcasing here. But that's basically up to you how much time you want to invest in just finishing up your scan or what's the end goal of the scan. My advice is just figure out what you want to do with the scan and yeah, just play with it, sculpt, add, subtract, like just go nuts. 3D sculpting for me, it's supposed to be 
always fun. That's why I get curious about these things. Try not to get too, fr too frustrated if it doesn't work from first. The goal isn't to make something realistic, it's more like to have a base sculpt from a scan using your LiDAR sensor you can easily import into Nomad. As you can see in just like a short walkthrough, I got to a point where, like I said, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. It's a good start because from here I can always add finishing touches to the sculpt or go nuts with the model. Just add things like props, hats, sunglasses and all sorts of other items. I'm gonna leave you with another time lapse of just adjusting a little bit more and this time I'm using a custom brush that I made which is a flat flattened brush with a squared alpha because I've noticed I really enjoy the flat brush style that you can see in characters such as Arcane I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I really enjoy them. As you can see, at this point, I'm basically sculpting the model more in the matcap view rather than the PBR. Because like I said, I try to use it as a model, a base model, for something that I can create myself. It's not creating from zero, but it gives you the similar look of the person that you just scanned. Adding things with clay, flatten them down with the flatten tool, adjusting with the drag or move tool, Basically, I'm just trying to figure out the shapes that I, I like in this portrait. If you like this kind of content and the things that I do, feel free to subscribe and make sure you check out the following up video regarding the post-processing part and how to light your subject in such a way to give it more life, depth and details along the way. Thank you. Keep it creative.